Uh, being a police officer and, um, you know, people say, but you very fashionable police. So yeah. what are you saying? That you turn heads? Ah, uh, I wouldn't do my head. <laughs> <laughs> the video you're about to see is a conversation between two people, one civilian and a member of the TTPS. The two have never met. Hi. Let's end the afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you. My name is Whitney. And my name is Joanna Achi. Hi, Joanne. Um, so, what, what do you do? Well, I'm a police officer. I have been a police officer for the past 39 years. It's cool that I'm actually having a conversation with an officer. And the time that you, you have been serving, still serving in, in the police force is very interesting, especially as a woman. Um, is there challenges? as being a female in the police force? Well, there are its challenges um, being a female officer in a male-dominated job. However, um, I have grown used to the challenges and have been able to overcome some of them. But I can tell you it's a very um, rewarding job, very interesting, and it's, it is what you make of it. OK. Um, have you been on the field for a very long time? As in patrols, or you do more administrative side of the policing? Well, actually, um, out of the 39 years, I spent 23 years as a criminal investigator, what we call a detective. So I spe I've done a lot of street work and um, investigation, because I have also served in investigations departments such as the uh, the Anti-Corruption Investigations Bureau. And also, uh, in my younger years as a detective, I also, in my later years, I was the inspector in charge of the Criminal Investigations Department now, that's at the Southwestern Division. So I've had my stint both as a young constable and as a supervisor in a Criminal Investigations Department. I always wanted to ask the officer this question because it's something that I witness um, among my friends and even just the general public. Why do you think there is so much hate now, especially towards police officers? Because when I was growing up, I loved to see police officers and I always ask my parents to slow down by a police vehicle. Or if I say a police officer, I want to wave, I want to shake their hand. Why is it now it's not like that? I think um, the hate comes from the persons who we will love to make uncomfortable because of the fact that they are breaking the law. And of course, uh, we are detaining persons, we are restraining person freedom and based on the law. So you will find there would be some hatred in that regard, but I think by and large, people love the police. When you look at the persons who make you know, statements such as the police wicked, you will see it's <laughs> when an arrest is being effected and persons who are breaking the law. Yes. So why do people feel that the police just show up at certain areas and arrest people? Just like that, it must have some sort of intel. If logically you're looking at the situation, we will not know everything. But I don't think an officer will just show up by a, someone's property and say, you come, I'm going to lock you up. And it all comes back to uh, public awareness and education. We have had programs, as you will see on Beyond the Tape, and other programs, even our press briefings, where we show police interaction with the public and also sensitize the members of the public on the law, which is mm -hmm. very critical in law enforcement. Once they are not aware of the law and why we do what we do, you will find you have those statements being made um, that the police, they are haters, police mm -hmm. are dogs. And still, when you do what you do, doing it the correct way and when, within the boundaries of the law, you still will have those negative statements being made. So what you like doing apart from police? And let's get that out of the way. We, we, when it's your time, me time, something that if people found out you were doing it, they'd be like, no, that is not, I don't believe that. You can't be doing that, that you enjoy. Well, I would say I love shopping. 
I enjoy going on a shopping trip. Oh, I love to yeah. travel. And locally, more at home, I will enjoy a very good cultural show, Calypso, mm -hmm. Soka, and Pan. We could lie, you know. <laughs> Especially with the shopping and the traveling. Oh my gosh, I love to travel. The only issue I have with traveling is that I get really sick oh. while I fly. But once I land, I'll be okay after 30 minutes of landing. Yes. And the nauseousness is gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it feels refreshing to be in a, a different country and the culture to experience. So that's, that's really nice. What do you like to shop? Like clothes? Um, um, I, I'm into fashion. I love... If, if I was not a police officer, I would have been a fashion designer. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. So if you had to spend your entire paycheck on clothes, shoes, handbags, you have to choose one, which one would it be? Okay, clothes, shoes second, and handbag. Mm, yeah, I'm like that too. To a less extent, you yeah. know? Clothes, so your heels or flats or sneakers person? Or all? All, if the, it depends on the event. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you see? You're right, you're right, you're right. Because some people I know, they, they believe it's just heels for everything. They just love heels or love sneakers, love flats. But it, it all depends on the look and where you go in. And if you want to look edgy, if you want to look a little more classy, formal. So that's, we could have a shopping day though. Oh, but yes. we need to have a budget. Well, yes, you know, so I different, <laughs> the point about it is people save for different reasons. And after I would have put my priorities, I, I have um, shopping for fashion and shoes very close to the top of the list. Oh, my goodness. We will be trouble if we meet up. <laughs> we will be, the town is going to be in trouble. Oh, girl. <laughs> I believe, too, you know, and even though um, you... You in the public, people uh, people know me because of the fact that I worked for um, about five years as the public information officer. So I was always on camera. Oh, yeah. So you have to have a certain. So you look find and that standard, you have yes. a standard. But from very young, since about eight years, I recall my mother had some old fashion books, and I will sit and draw, and change up the fashion in those books and draw outfits, and that went right through. To, um, until I joined the police service, that I will, will design uh, outfits, and if I can't get somebody to sew it, I will look in the store and see what I see, anything that is close to it, yes. and redesign it to suit me, that you know? Cool. Which, which era of um, fashion you like the most? Um, I would, you see the 60s? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> we could really be friends, but I, I love the 50s side. 50s into 60s, but more 50s. Yes, the, the 50s into oh 60s, my yes. God. Because of some of those fashions, that they, they, you know. Right, and not only that, they, they return, they, they, they evolve, they come back, and it, sometimes oh. what you see now is almost the same thing from yes, then. Yes, yes. Just that the they tweak a little bit. Thank you. So, um,. Uh, being a police officer and, um, you know, people say, but you're very fashionable police. Yes. And, and yeah, you know, you just have to have a standard and you're in the public eyes and, and, and you have to really look the part. So what are you saying? That you turn heads? Ah, uh, I wouldn't toot my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, no. You can be a fashionable police officer and, you know, be attractive, nothing is wrong with that. Yeah. I love to see officers look good. You mustn't just look like, oh God, I work. I Which one are uniform? Right, no. I hear you, no, no. I hear you. So what I mean, you, you, when you interact with somebody, half your job is done. If you have to do an interview, half your, your job, that interview, sometimes you may say the wrong thing or you may not be so impressive yes. at the interview, but you start the interview looking impressive, mm -hmm. you know? Looking sharp. Oh yes. That is what we're saying. So, um, what, what, is, what, what would you say um, to wine? Are you a, a person that likes to drink alcohol? Not excessively, obviously. I may take a drink of wine occasionally. What's your favorite wine? I drink Porto. Um... Oh, listen, hold on. Stop, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Hold <laughs> on. Listen. Yes. You see Cockburn's? Yes, and oh. the six graves oh. uh, you like as well. Oh. Listen, we need to have a glass of wine. I'm not lying. 
and just dress up. But this have to be after COVID. Most but certainly. We, need to, we, to, we just need to dress like really 50s, 60s. Oh, yeah. Have a glass of wine <laughs> and just talk about any and everything under the sun because clearly we have similar interests. Oh, and that's so nice. Yeah, because I guess, you know, people may feel, you know, when you hear officer, oh, they just don't do anything but go home and do nothing. But you you have something interesting there. I'm, I'm intrigued. Well, I am not well, lying. It's, it's important with me to even have a work-life balance. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, our job is very demanding. I can tell you that. And I think had I not been able to balance the two, even in my social life, I don't know what would have happened. I think I would have been stressed out. Yeah, you wouldn't be more. looking fashionable at all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So you mentioned with me with, you know, dealing with persons in my field of entertainment and the different personalities. What about you? Because I'm sure you'll have to deal with many personalities, not just outside with the public, but internally. Well, indeed, you know, um, as police officers, well, we come from that very society where some of the same issues that would affect a civilian would affect the police officer as well. And the issue is... Um, how you manage and how you deal with an officer who has an issue, it may be a domestic issue, it may be a work-related issue, and you have to listen. Hmm. So uh, they see us women in the organization as nurturing and as a motherly figure. So when they may come to you, even as a senior officer, they, they come to you as a mother or a big sister, and they will, you know, lay out their concerns and, and, and they would need some advice. So I have to deal with that on a daily basis. And um, You think that's fair though? For you to, I mean, you already have to deal with so many things in the police force and then you still have to now deal with other issues of persons, their co-workers and their personal issues. It, I, I would not say use the word fear. I think it has more to do with managing your human resource because there are several things that will affect the performance of a police officer. Um, a domestic situation at home, uh, issue on, on, on the job where they believe that a supervisor may be oppressive to them. It may be an issue of having the resources to do the job that would have them frustrated if they don't. So when you are managing human resources, there are so many issues that you have to deal with. And some of them, you know, who may have exercise or you may see non-performance on their part, it, it sometimes it, it may need that you sit with them and you chat with them to find out why are you, are not, you are not performing, what is affecting your performance. And you'd be surprised to know some of the stories that you hear. Mm -hmm. But even you have to exercise good leadership and listen. And I think that is most important as a leader being able to listen and to act. Okay, would you say that um, being in the police force, you mentioned like 39 years, right? Uh-huh. Has it affected your relationship, may it be with a companion or family members? Because, I mean, 39 years is a lot that you gave towards the service. Um, do you regret certain things personally that because of work it, it affected that? Actually, uh, no. I love my job with a passion. And I had, um, I made several sacrifices in trying to be the best officer I can be. Those sacrifices, you ask yourself now at this point in my career whether it was worth it, yes. Hmm. I made several sacrifices having to study while managing your workload. And while um, long ago you would have gotten some time to, to study, you, know, you still had to manage your workload and still be on top of your game as a police officer. I have enjoyed being a police officer. I'm still enjoying being a police officer. I have had several successes. I have had challenges mm -hmm. having to deal with some officers who were very unreasonable, but um, by and large, I think the career I chose was very rewarding for me. So, um, Whitney, do you think 
that what you do can help uh, policing in your country? Well, definitely, because the forum or the medium that I have, it's a platform that you're supposed to inform. I, I learn from persons like Edison Kahn and Lisa Wickham, these great names and others, but it was always an informative way of entertaining. Even though you're involved in entertainment, you must still be able to bring forth knowledge. And policing is something that um, we have to be exposed to every day. And if you don't know your rights as a citizen, one, um, you'll be lost. And if you don't know how to deal with certain situations, um, maybe that you need to involve an officer, I think we are there and we are very important and instrumental in giving that information out there because not many people will read or pay attention to those things because they find it boring, but because you're involved in entertainment or the urban field, they will tend to listen to what you say more because of what, where their interest lies. So it's always good to always give some sort of knowledge, especially with regards to policing. So Whitney, are you married? Soon to be, soon to be, oh soon my. to be. Just the economy is hard like manga seed. But, oh. um, and then COVID, but soon it's going to happen. Yeah, it's just a delay. Okay, well, I am. I'm, my husband also came from a military background. I was not going to He ask. has retired. Okay. So he understood the demands that were placed on me. And, and we work together. We work it together. And, and it, it's working out. So I would want to wish you all successes with your job as well, even yes. in the entertainment field where you are. And I am sure you're very attractive and will draw attention as well. With the clothes, with the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like what advice you could give me, I mean, before even entering into um, a marriage, because I'm not there just yet. Mm -hmm. And... Um, is there any fear or doubt when you had to make that step? No, you, are rem you, you have to remember that the, you, it may be two different personalities. And there's an issue, you, there's something called compromise, that he may not like the things that you like and vice versa, but it, there's a, you must come to some compromise. I don't really look at soccer on television, okay. but sometimes we want to be in the same space to enjoy a show together, but he wants to be see a game. And I am there looking at the game. I say, they reach halftime yet? You know? Oh so, my gosh. But you're there to enjoy each other's company. And you, of course, you will have differences, you know, in opinions, Yes. but it must not be taken out of, you know, that it reaches the stage that you're all not speaking to each other. And of course, you will have issues mm -hmm. so it's not a it's, it's not a perfect world you didn't make that man for yourself hmm. and he will come with certain uh personalities some certain traits that you can fix that to suit you you know but subtly yes don't try to make the man into that perfect man that you dream dream of if you understand yes, he yes. may have his faults and whilst, I mean, if it is not major faults that you all can work on, you, you have to learn to laugh. Yes. Make a joke Definitely. out of something, you know what I'm saying? And try not to be angry with the person going on for days on end. No, yeah. no. I agree with that. I, I'm definitely taking that advice because I learned from my parents too because they have been married for almost 30 something years. But oh. they, um, they are a great example and I will say I, I, I appreciate the advice you have just given me mm -hmm. because many people shy from marriage and to hear that, no, it wasn't surprising. I thought you were going to say you married a police officer too, but uh, you're still in the same field, same service, you know, yes. in the services field. But um, it's nice to hear because many times you don't really hear many people who hold a position like you that is so demanding that they may be married. Oh, yes. And that is why it's critical for that work-life balance. And you see, some people look at it as, you know, I, you see marriage, I don't want that responsibility. Mm -hmm. But what do you really want? Right. And, you know, you, you want to have a life, you want to start a family, companionship. You want somebody, when you come home from work, you say, boy, if you know what happened today, so, 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 so. And, and you have a nice conversation discussing what mm -hmm. happened today on the job. My husband is a retired chief petty officer with the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. So he understood.
some of the military or even though our organization is paramilitary he understood some of the issues that i may go home with yeah. you know so that he can give an advice or, or you know tell me well no you should have done done it this way or you should have done it that way and but but i'm telling you marriage life has its ups and downs but it's what you make of it very true what is your favorite food I enjoy a good pilau, you know. Yeah, you like pilau. Yes. So I you do. have to choose between um, coleslaw or avocado with the pilau. Avocado, definitely. Wow, easy. I know some people have an issue with that, like myself. <laughs> I need. To, I have to figure out. I don't know. Like I need both. Oh, I can't okay. choose. I can't choose. I need a nice coleslaw with the the avocado. But I'm a crab and dumpling kind of girl. More crab, the curry crab. You can give me the crab and some kalalu, and I'll enjoy that all day. Okay, but I enjoy also a good provision and saltfish, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like kingfish. I don't really like saltfish, but you see a kingfish? If I have to choose a fish, oh my God. Uh huh. King any day. Grill, stew, grill again. <laughs> well, <laughs> steam. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Anything else that you think that may be something you do that people don't know? It's something that you only keep to yourself. I um I do a lot of research online. I just could spend a whole day at the computer researching the mm. different issues and um, making documents. You know, the, the, uh, preparing my own documents on different issues. Then, so I read a lot, and um, if it's a current issue in the media, I will go and research. Because I always um, believe in if I'm to engage in a discussion on a current issue. I should be well informed and in to the even know. engage in the in the um, discussion and in the know. So I would always like to lend a discussion with proper research. Right. So I value that, and I that in my my spare time I do a lot of reading and research. That's very nice. Well, with me, um, this is a bit strange. I love to color. Oh. Yeah. So I will take my daughter's coloring books <laughs> that she makes me buy in abundance because she will color one page and then say she's finished. So it actually relaxes me when I color. Um, I can't draw, but I just love to color. Oh, so you, bo you purchase the books for you. No, but I purchase it for her, but she doesn't use it. So instead of it going to waste, I then start coloring. OK, very interesting though, yeah. Whitney. Very interesting. So Mom Ashley, I will say this to you. Um, it has been a pleasure speaking with you although i can't see who you are i am just in my mind putting together an image of what you may look like with the voice uh, but thus far it was very interesting and um nice to meet someone like yourself who is involved in the police force and getting to know a different side of you and appreciating what you are doing for trinidad and tobago in the police service well, Whitney, I appreciate that, and it's always um, good to hear our pleasant sentiments as opposed to some of the, as you rightly um, alluded to, that, you know, why do people choose to hate on the police? Mm -hmm. So having a, a discussion with someone who, you, who allow you into their private space and that you can share with that person what it means to be a police officer, it was really enlightening and refreshing. And um, I really appreciate and seeing that we have a lot in common as well. So it tells you that um, you can go away with the understanding that when you see us in uniform as a police officer, it's not that hard exterior and, and that tough person that you see, but a person who's pretty much just like you. And me.